Dragon mythologies and depictions can be found on every continent excluding Antarctica. The similarities and consistencies among these depictions alone show some kind of connecting line between all of these ancient civilizations. Today I want to take a look at the ones we find in the Americas. North, South, and Central America were thought to be completely isolated from European, Asian, and African civilizations until Leif Erikson landed in Canada around 1000 AD. And yet we find depictions of serpents and dragon-like creatures from Canada to South America. We have all seen the depictions of the feathered serpent gods among the Mesoamerican civilizations, and I do want to take a look at some of the more fascinating depictions in Mexico and Central America, but traditions in North and South America also had their versions of these creatures, and left behind a few detailed images and artworks showing us what they believed to have seen. Let's start in North America. The Ojibwe and other Great Lake region's tribes have a tradition of a creature referred to as an underwater panther, or the Great Lynx. It had the head and paws of a giant cat, but was covered in scales and had dagger-like spikes running along its back and tail. It was said to have inhabited the Great Lakes and many of the waters surrounding them. The creature was extremely hostile and frequently ate people right out of their canoes. This depiction is located in Ontario near Lake Superior. As you can see, this creature was massive in comparison to the canoe and looks remarkably similar to a dragon, complete with horns, massive backplates, and a powerful tail. This specific glyph also shows giant serpents alongside the dragon-like creature. Here's another depiction of the same creature housed at the Smithsonian. And there's also a mound in Ohio called the Alligator Effigy Mound, mistakenly named that because it was first thought to be an alligator, but later confirmed to be one of these aquatic Great Lynx creatures. Here are a few other artworks and rock art depicting the same creature located around the Great Lakes region. But these are not the only dragons spoken of in Native American history. There's also the very famous Serpent Mound, also in Ohio. There's the carved stone in Nova Scotia, which looks to have been done by Europeans, possibly Scandinavians who arrived with Leif Erikson and created a settlement. Further west, along the Mississippi, artifacts with serpents and feathered gods similar to the Mesoamerican civilizations have been found. Archaeologists call many of these depictions of a bird god. But to me it looks more like an Aztec depiction of the feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl, so I'm not really sure if these were supposed to be birds exactly. A lot of the actual serpents remind me of Aztec and Mayan serpents as well. I also found a few Mississippian artifacts that show the serpent in an Ouroboros symbol, with the tail in the mouth of the creature. This is something we can mysteriously find all over the world, including one on a temple in Mexico known as the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, which I believe is Toltec. We find this type of serpent creature all over Mexico and into Central America with the Mayans and Olmec. Some of these are super detailed and incredible to look at. Every Mesoamerican culture depicted these similar creatures and believed them to be associated with the gods. The unique feature in these civilizations' depictions is of course the feather feature. Other than that, we see huge similarities to other dragons and serpents depicted in ancient cultures across the world. If you haven't watched my video comparing Mesoamerican dragons to Chinese and Asian dragons, I recommend you watch that. I'll put that up in the cards and below in the description. So finally we come to South America. When we think of cultures in South America, the first that come to mind is definitely the Inca. The Inca have a mythological creature similar to the dragon they called Amaru. Oddly enough, some say it was the namesake for the entire continent, America or Amaruca, meaning the land of the great serpent. Much like many other cultures' descriptions of dragons, it was said to be a chimera-like creature, having the head of a bird, puma or llama, and condor wings, a snake's body a fish tail, and coated in crocodilian scales. Amaru symbolizes the water that runs through the irrigation canals, rivers, and springs that makes it possible for the seeds and crops to be transformed into vegetables. It is also related to the underworld, the earth, and earthquakes. According to the myths, Amaru's have a protective or destructive behavior. There's a myth called Amaru Aranwe that was about two powerful Amaru's fighting against each other. It says Viracocha sent the gods of lightning and wind to defeat them. The two Amaru's tried to fight the gods, but then they escaped flying back to the skies. But the wind god dragged them back to the earth with the power of the wind, and the lightning god fought and put the final blow to them, 
When the two Amaros died, they fell to the earth and turned into the chain of mountains that are located in Valley del Montaro, Peru. However, this creature predated the Inca and can be found in art from earlier cultures as well. Here are some ruins found in northern Peru of the Moche civilization. They are dated somewhere around 100 to 800 AD and show clear images of serpent-like dragons and faces that could be the face of a dragon-like creature. Then we have the much older sites of the Chavan civilization, existing from 1200 BC to around 400 BC in Peru. These ones are absolutely incredible and show dragon images that look like something found in China or Japan, and some that look like the heads of dragons at the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl at Teotihuacan. And then at the famous site of Tiwanaku, where we find the mysterious H-blocks, there's a large gate depicting the creator god Viracocha, and surrounding him is his fleet of what some have concluded to be dragon creatures. And if you look closely enough, you can see the resemblance to those found in North and Central America. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out the Patreon. It's only $3 if you haven't yet. See you later.